than hiding. That's better than hiding that back. I know. But the only problem we got now is we have to go and retune it. All right? Let's go get a beer first. Yeah, let's go get a beer. I'd like to thank Mona Corson of Westport for that wonderful luncheon of hemp sandwiches and wood chip consomme. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for. Uh, this is a uh, titty turn. Terrific turnout for the meeting. Yes, terrific. He led the campaign to ban the use of electric toothbrushes during peak load hours. And to sound the alarm... Of I suppose you uh, came here to hear me speak. No, no, not really. I'm uh, into trees. Mm. Trees? Friends of nature love trees, you know, so I come to the meetings. That's very interesting. I love anybody who loves trees. Well, they, they happen to be a great passion of mine. You know what I like best about trees? I uh, know what? Oh, that you can lie under them on a moonlit night with the breeze blowing. Ball your brains out. Mr. Arthur J. Foyt. <laughs> Mr. Foyt. Mr. Foyt. Give that sucker some juice. Hey, the only thing hiding it, hiding it, hiding it in the pool did was make it pretty. It ain't running worth the shit, well, just, just, and it's wet. I know that. Just hit it one more time, all right? Hey, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. I know what's wrong. Don't think for a minute that uh, uh, we in Washington don't appreciate your mother's march to ban the sale uh, of colored toilet paper to uh, help re reduce irritation of the uh, rectum. <laughs> but today, I want to direct my remarks to an old and familiar enemy, the automobile. All right, one more time, let me hear it. It, it, it reminds me of a, uh, a poem I, I wrote. The automobile, the automobile. They picked on the wrong one this time. I guarantee they're gonna pay for this because when the going gets tough, the tough get going. <laughs> She's running good now, buddy. <laughs> I still think we ought to paint it. Well, if we're gonna paint it, let's go ahead and light a side, all right? <laughs> hey, there's a motel. Look at the parking lot. The cannonballers have it all jammed up. Man, I can't handle this traffic. Hold on to your lunch pail. This may get a little weird. Hey, wait a minute. Slow down. Hey, you're the one running this flea bag. Where are the hookers? What? Hookers, man. Where are the hookers? Excuse me. Oh, my dog. Hey, JJ. Probably didn't realize this, but the parking lot's outside. Yeah, I know. Brakes went out. Huh. What do you think, you're the president? Well, let me make one thing perfectly clear. We feel terrible about it. And if they can't take a joke... <laughs> Thank goodness. We just had a terrible accident. No, well, we'd like to help you, but we're off duty. Oh, well, th this man looks bad. Maybe he's dead. And you should call the coroner. JJ, mm. he don't look too good. Yeah. I think he just had his bell rung. Well, can't you do something? I mean, you're professionals. This is our day off. Will you guys do something? This man's life is hanging by a thread. Victor? You have to be very scientific about this. Could go up the nostrils, affect the sinuses. That's true. No 
Don't bother about the bill. Just uh, give him a couple of enemas and call me in the morning. Hi, how's it going? Perfect. We'd like two singles. Uh, J.J. McClure, Victor Princey. I'll be in the bar. Always like a couple of drinks right after surgery. <laughs> I wonder why that guy parked his truck in the lobby. Only in America. Get me 12 suites. Better yet, the entire floor. Ah, too much couscous. I just sure as H would like to get my hands on those Hell's Angels who are driving that truck. But you know, it's probably just as well because I am a wild bull when I lose my temper. Oh. I love wild bulls. Oh. Funny that, uh, really funny that you should say, oh my God, it's them. Them who? Those hell's angels. They could be part of a terrorist group or something. I don't know. But uh, this place is filling up with some real hoodlums. Do you see anything weird back there? No. I'm going to find out. I did a I don't understand why it's so difficult for you to find a doctor. It's very, very hard. You know, it's not easy finding a doctor to take off like that. Dr. Gay doesn't even leave his house. I don't understand it. They haven't got a chance. If you're going to win the cannonball and you're driving an ambulance, you have to have a doctor in the... What does Dr. Gay do? He's my shrink. He was committed yesterday. Why? He was smoking bananas. <sighs> he gets very upset when he talks to him. So do I. Oh. Sorry. I don't want to throw my drink. Congratulations. Here's to you. Good luck. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. <laughs> you dumb shit. <laughs> you dumb shit. They haven't got a chance. You know what? I think I'm going to call the Greek and put another 10,000 on it. <laughs> JJ. Mm. What about those two? Maybe, maybe, maybe one of those beauties could be our patient. Maybe both of them could be. Woof. Mm, I could be very patient with those patients. They're very likable. Very likable. I tell you what. It's the two of us go over there and talk to them. Huh? Okay. I'll do all the talking. Okay. Victor. Yeah. We just think about the doctor. Okay. Good evening, ladies. Evening. Hello. My name is J.J. McClure, and this is Victor Princey, my executive assistant. Hi. How did the doctor oh, Victor? Oh, terrorists, my dimpled ass. These people make terrorists look like the sisters of charity. These guys are cannonballers. What is that, a bowling team? As you probably know, we're the favorites to win the cannonball tomorrow, and I was wondering if one of you or both of you might like to ride in the winning vehicle. Oh, that would be very exciting. Exciting. But we're cannonballers ourselves, thank you. They're cannonballers. And uh, as for the winning vehicle, well, we'll just have to wait and see. You haven't seen our equipment.